How did you recruit during COVID? The first thing I did, uh, and it's probably the most important thing I did was Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. You're watching Code Ray, and if you're new, I'm currently an incoming software engineer at a fan company. And on my channel, I help you to navigate and succeed in your tech career. For today's video, we have a special guest with us. Um, he is currently a student who got his offer rescinded during COVID, which I know happened to a lot of other um, engineers and other people in other fields. Um, but he was super motivated afterwards and was able to work really hard in recruiting and eventually started a job at a fan company. So let's get started. Can you start us off by giving a brief introduction about yourself? Yeah, sure. My name is Will and I recently graduated with a degree in computer science. Um, and back in March, my offer from a different company got rescinded, but luckily I've been able to bounce back and get uh, an offer from Amazon. Awesome, awesome, thank you so much. So can we back up a little bit and uh, talk to us about this start of your recruiting journey? So before COVID, um, what was your recruiting experience like? Yeah, so uh, before COVID, like the recruiting season before that, I was actually pretty successful. So mm -hmm. if, uh, if we want to go all the way back, back like when I was a junior, or I pretty much failed all my intern interviews. And also I, I, just, I just did get unlucky in a lot of them. Yeah, no, for sure, um, I feel. So yeah, after that happened, mm -hmm. I, I really looked inside and I thought like, like well, where did I go wrong? Like what can I improve? Right. Yeah, uh, yeah. Because if, you, if something like that happens, it's always important to just kind of reflect and mm -hmm. think about uh, what to actually change. And I completely switched up my strategy. Well, not completely, but uh, I definitely prepped a little differently, um, a little more smartly as well. Right. And uh, before uh, COVID, I did many on-sites and I ended up getting three offers, mm -hmm. all from really good companies. Um, and I ended up going with Thumbtack, which is a billion dollar startup. Can you just elaborate a little bit um, about what kind of new strategies you used to recruit during that time? So when I was looking for an internship, I did pretty much what everyone else was doing. That was, you know, grinding lead code, mm -hmm. doing all these algorithm questions. Mm -hmm. And, you know, make no mistake, I was, I was great at doing the questions. Uh, but for some reason, I just wasn't like, getting interviews, I, was, I wasn't like passing interviews. Mm -hmm. um, it was just kind of like a nightmare. Right. right. Um, so what I realized is there's a lot more, uh, a lot more to just solving like the question, mm -hmm. more to just like, you know, getting the question right. Um, and me personally, I'm kind of like a, an awkward guy, especially in like high pressure situations. Mm -hmm. um, and I kind of found that out by mock interviewing. And during the in interview, I just like, and this was like a mock interview. It wasn't even a real interview. I noticed how just like kind of awkward I was. I wasn't really confident enough. Mm -hmm. And um, also I just really froze up like so many times. So what I definitely did differently was I did a ton of mock interviews, mm -hmm. um, like like a huge volume, like over 20. And what I found out was even in interviews where I didn't necessarily answer the question right, like in so many interviews, I, um, I basically like didn't finish the problem or just didn't get it right. And mm -hmm. yet I still passed. And mm -hmm. I owe that all to basically just like practicing, speaking very clearly, like explaining my thoughts very clearly, my thought process. Um, yeah, so that, that was definitely the, the biggest, the most important thing that I did. What was your experience with COVID? And um, how did you feel after you got that uh, rescinded offer? When I was searching for a full-time job, mm -hmm. I didn't really want to go with big tech or any uh, like big company for that mm -hmm. matter. Mm -hmm. um, again, I have nothing against big companies. Mm -hmm. um, I just felt like at that time, the companies that would help me grow the most are mm -hmm. like really fast moving ones. And you right, don't really right. get that kind of velocity with big companies. So I ended up choosing uh, to go with a startup. Mm -hmm. So the startup is called Thumbtack. So Thumbtack is a startup and they, they're basically a platform for professionals. Mm -hmm. So you can kind of think of that as like a bougie Craigslist. Mm -hmm. And what really made me decide to go with them over the other companies was when I interviewed, their engineers were like super smart. They were all mm -hmm. like ridiculously smart. Um, and you can just kind of tell like, um, even like they answered all my questions that I had about the company and I was just really blown away. Mm -hmm. um, and I, I really felt like I was going to thrive in that environment. So yeah, I, I accepted it. And this was way back in September 2019. So this mm -hmm. was like pretty early. And then in March, in March 2020, like late March, I suddenly get a phone call from my recruiter. Mm -hmm. And 
this was when coronavirus was really picking up like the the velocity of like the the cases were just picking up and everyone was staying at home so i i kind of knew what was coming um but it was like late march uh, i was still in schools uh still my senior year i was starting to prepare for finals and i suddenly get this phone call from my recruiter uh, obviously i i didn't really know it was my recruiter just it was just that it was like a number from san francisco and mm-hmm. in my head i was like and i picked it up and it's like the um and it's the the chief of people yeah she she basically said i'm sorry to be like breaking this news to you and i just mm-hmm. i just straight up told her i think i know what this call is about basically the coronavirus was completely decimating thumb tax mm-hmm. revenue mm-hmm. and they wouldn't be able to offer uh they wouldn't be able to honor my offer so how did you feel right after you got that call like what was going on through your mind and i just felt like super stressed um uh, obviously like a little sad um because i went through all this effort of recruiting senior year doing all these on sites making a final decision like choosing a company that i thought i would really excel at um only for all that to be like pulled out from under my feet essentially mm-hmm. so really really a sucky feeling um but after after i felt sad um i kind of felt angry because like mm-hmm. right, right uh like sure. this was completely out of my control mm-hmm. it was it was something that happened purely by bad luck um, right. i i didn't do anything wrong honestly when i woke up the next day and i had the chance to like um sleep it off essentially mm-hmm. um i realized that I, there's no point in stressing about stuff that was out of my control right um it's just really pointless instead what i focused on was like stressing about things that i could control and mm-hmm. the things that i could control in that moment was starting to interview prep starting to reach out to my mm-hmm. like network my friends Uh, see if they had any leads so like what did you do um with your motivation at the time like how did you recruit during covid the first thing i did uh and it's probably the most important thing i did was i went on linkedin and mm-hmm. i made a linkedin post and mm-hmm. the linkedin post essentially read um hey my offer was rescinded feels bad mm-hmm. if anyone has any leads please let me know i knew that like if i just applied online Mm-hmm. especially during a pandemic when there's like a shortage of jobs mm-hmm. that would be really unproductive and i would have an abysmal like uh interview rate mm-hmm. so i knew i had to reach out like explicitly reach out to my contacts um through linkedin and also through my friends mm-hmm. to see if they had any like if they knew for like any openings in other companies and if they could refer me essentially so i made a linkedin post um i posted it and I, I kind of got lucky because that post went semi viral. Mm-hmm. It got like thousands of views. It got like a like a thousand likes. Mm-hmm. Um and I ended up getting many recruiters and engineers in my LinkedIn DMs mm-hmm. uh, who were offering me uh, offering to like refer me or just like interview me. Mm-hmm. So that was like really probably the most important thing that I did. So how the Amazon interview process started for me was the recruiter basically DM'd me in LinkedIn mm-hmm. and he asked me if I was uh interested in like the role. Mm-hmm. And of course I said yes. <laughs> and that's how things kind of kicked off. So after you got your offer rescinded, um how did you start prepping for um the interviews during COVID? Yeah. So luckily my last recruiting cycle was a few months prior to that. Mm-hmm. So I did still have a lot of like that uh residual knowledge. Mm-hmm. Uh the first thing I did was I I opened the code <sighs> and I basically redid a lot of the basic questions, a lot mm-hmm. of the like really popular questions that I've already done just to refresh mm-hmm. my knowledge, mm-hmm. just to get up to speed with the basics. Mm-hmm. Um after that, I started targeting all the questions, all the problems that had like specific structures, data structures or mm-hmm. algorithms that I had trouble with. Mm-hmm. And um that's because like Obviously, I'm not going to spend that much time on questions that I know I'm going mm-hmm. to be able to solve pretty quickly. Mm-hmm. Instead, I'm going to target questions that I had trouble with during the previous recruiting cycle. Mm-hmm. And sure. yeah, I basically did those first. I really heavily focused that, mm-hmm. and after I felt relatively confident for solving those types of questions, then I basically went to solving random questions mm-hmm. uh just so I could get my pattern recognition really good. Um obviously, this type of process uh is different for someone who hasn't touched the code before right. um if if you're new to this i would definitely recommend starting really slow mm-hmm. and uh, obviously like to the basics mm-hmm. um obviously the basics and just yeah go from from there uh in terms of like the amount of questions i did mm-hmm. or like the the volume 
So I think in those three weeks, I did around 230 or something, mm -hmm. probably oh, wow. maybe, maybe more. Um, Holy. And I would basically spend my entire day doing Lee code, mm -hmm. um, like sun up to sundown. I would just open it up and just solve those questions and make sure I really understood those concepts. Mm -hmm. I basically took Lee coding as my full-time job. Mm -hmm. And I think I spent around like 12 hours a day on average, just, you know, sitting down and doing Lee code problems. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, again, I wouldn't recommend doing just straight mm -hmm. Lee code problems back to back. I would also recommend doing a lot of mock interviews mm -hmm. too. I, I feel like that's uh, where a lot of people fail, especially. Um, but I already did my fair share of mock uh -huh. interviews at that point. Uh -huh. So I was focused on getting all those questions right in the interview. Tell us about the uh, Amazon interview process. The process was really fast. Like I almost mm -hmm. got whiplash. Um, uh -huh. the, the recruiter just straight up DM'd me on LinkedIn. He said, hey, are you interested? And I said, yeah. And he says, um, okay, let me know when you're ready to take the online assessment. Oh. And um, at that point, I was kind of out of practice mm -hmm. in terms of algorithm interviews because uh, it's, it's been months since I recruited. Mm -hmm. So I told him like, okay, hold up. Let me practice for like a bit uh, until I'm confident to tackle the online assessment or like, mm -hmm. you know, the online code challenge. Um, so I did my studying. And then when I felt ready, I took that uh, code challenge and um, I guess I did pretty well enough uh, to move on to the next stage, which was the on-site interview. For Amazon, uh, this is pretty uh, pretty public, by the way, but Amazon does have kind of like a funky interview process mm -hmm. where uh, not only do you have to study for like a technical portion, but mm -hmm. you also have to study for something they call the leadership principles. Mm -hmm. And there's like a really good medium post explaining those leadership principles in depth, especially mm -hmm. when it comes to interviews. Um, but uh, essentially, I read that medium post many times over, mm -hmm. um, and I made sure I carefully understood the leadership principles. Mm -hmm. Like I didn't memorize the leadership principles. What I did was I thought about all the like past projects, past internships that I did, mm -hmm. and uh, all my experiences, experiences, and I thought how could I relate those to those leadership principles, and how would right. I talk about it like that in an interview. Mm -hmm. um, for the rest of the technical interview, it was pretty run the mill, mm -hmm. uh, algorithm questions mostly. And I would just go on code and do a lot of problems with those common patterns that mm -hmm. you often see in interviews. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, the onset interview was obviously virtual, uh, but also it was just really long. It was mm -hmm. like six hours long oh. with a, like a one hour break in between. So mm -hmm. like five hours of me pretty much talking constantly. Mm -hmm. um, so I was really grateful for uh, mock interviewing so much mm -hmm. because I could just talk uh, for hours uh, without being too tired or fatigued. And so how long was the process before you got the offer from Amazon? And did you get any offers from other companies? And what made you choose to go to a big tech company? Because I remember you saying that you wanted to do a startup, right? So I did get a few offers from like smaller startups that I obviously didn't go through with. Mm -hmm. uh, but I actually didn't get too many offers from other companies mm -hmm. because Amazon essentially gave me an offer so fast that mm -hmm. I didn't have time to do onsite interviews at other companies. Uh -huh. And I honestly, I just really didn't want to take the risk right. of like losing the offer, especially mm -hmm. during the pandemic. So I just took the offer uh, and told all the recruiters that um, I, I chose to go with this specific company. Mm -hmm. um, but like, thank you for your time, mm -hmm. essentially. Right. Um, so what made me decide to choose uh, Amazon. So I guess the obvious reason is like stability. Mm -hmm. Amazon was like doing great during the pandemic. Mm -hmm. um, back when uh, I was recruiting for the other companies, I did have like a lot of liberty in choosing like what companies I specifically want to work at. Mm -hmm. But now that we're in a pandemic and uh, everyone's getting laid off left and right, I don't really have that choice. Mm -hmm. um, at least like I, I don't really have that flexibility anymore. Thank you so much, Will, for telling us about your experience. It was really motivating um, for us to hear about all the things that you've been through and how you carried yourself back up after you were pushed down. Um, so is there any advice that you would give for current um, computer science students or current computer science and engineers who are um, recruiting during COVID? Yeah, so first of all, uh, it is a tough time. So don't like get down on yourself if you can't find jobs like the same way uh, other people could find jobs pre-COVID. Mm -hmm. I would definitely um, 
reach out to your network if possible, especially if you are directly affected by the coronavirus. I think a lot of people are really generous mm -hmm. and they could definitely help you in some way, as long as you know, like you, you will pass it on somehow in the future. So networking is really critical, especially during coronavirus, because you're just not going to stand out as much um, when companies just aren't hiring. Mm -hmm. So definitely, um, definitely try to network both with your like school's alumni mm -hmm. uh, or your school students and also current professionals. Mm -hmm. Thanks so much, Will, for being here with us today and telling us about your experience. Um, for those of you who are currently recruiting during COVID um, or have their offers rescinded, um, I just wanted to say like, don't give up, stay motivated. And I know it's really easy to become unmotivated during these times, but um, in the future it will work out. Um, so thank you so much for watching today and thank you for being, us, of being with us today, Will. Yeah, thanks for having me. Good luck everyone. Thank you.